In this lecture, we will classify quadrics. These are curves in R2 and surfaces in R3 given by polynomial equations of degree 2. We will begin with the study of uh, quadratic curves on a plane. The general equation that we will consider will be ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f is equal to zero, where a, b, c, d, e, and f are real numbers. And our goal is uh, to change the coordinate system to bring this equation to the simplest possible form. We will allow the following coordinate transformations. So first we will allow orthogonal transformations. So this means that we change a basis from the standard basis to another orthonormal basis. And uh, secondly, we will allow translations. This means that we are going to shift all points on the plane with a given vector. This transformation will change the origin. And this means that this is not a linear transformation but this is an affine transformation of a plane. And in general, we will allow compositions of linear orthogonal transformations and uh, these affine translations. These uh, transformations can be classified as uh, plane isometries because uh, they preserve distances between points on a plane. We will start with the curve in the given coordinate system and then we are going to find a new coordinate system where the equation of this curve will become much simpler. Because we are doing orthogonal transformations, the axes of the new coordinate systems will be perpendicular to each other, but because we are doing also translations, the origin of the new coordinate system will not coincide with the origin of the original coordinate system. We shall start by looking at the quadratic form. Let us take the purely quadratic part in this equation and uh, denote it as uh, q of v. So this will be ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared, where v is uh, the vector xy. This is the vector in the standard coordinate system. We can associate a symmetric matrix to this quadratic form. So this will be A, B over 2, B over 2, and C. And we know that uh, symmetric matrices are diagonalizable in uh, an orthonormal basis that we can call a basis B. This will be a basis of eigenvectors of this matrix. If we place the eigenvectors from this basis as columns, we will get the change of basis matrix. So this will be denoted as matrix C or this is change of basis from basis B to the standard basis. And introducing the vector of B coordinates of the same vector, so if we denote it as x tilde and y tilde, 
then uh, the relationship between uh, these uh, two vectors are the following. So we, we get that VE is uh, C B to E times VB. And the opposite relationship is that VB is uh, C inverse times uh, VE. In this way, we will get expressions for x tilde and y tilde in terms of x and y and vice versa. And we point out that because this matrix is orthogonal, this implies that calculating C inverse is easy and C inverse is just equal to C transpose. Once we perform this change of variables, then uh, the quadratic form will diagonalize. And so we're going to get the equation lambda 1 x tilde squared plus uh, lambda 2 y tilde squared, where lambda 1 and lambda 2 are eigenvalues of this matrix. Since we know how to express x and y in terms of x tilde and y tilde, so this is given by this equation, then we will be able to complete this transformation for the whole equation and so make the change of variables in the linear terms as well. It will be important for us to pay attention to the signs of the eigenvalues. And so if we introduce a tilde to be the absolute value of lambda 1 and b tilde to be the absolute value of lambda 2, then our equation will take one of the following three forms. So first we could have a tilde x tilde squared plus b tilde y tilde squared plus d tilde x tilde plus e tilde y tilde plus f, well f is not going to change, is equal to zero, or we could have a tilde x tilde squared minus b tilde y tilde squared plus d tilde x tilde plus e tilde y tilde plus f is equal to zero. Now the case when both eigenvalues are negative can be reduced to case one by multiplying the whole equation by negative one. So we're not going to consider that case separately. However, we do need to consider as a separate case the case when one of these eigenvalues is uh, equal to zero. So then this equation will be a tilde x tilde squared plus d tilde x tilde plus e tilde y tilde plus f is equal to zero. And again, we can assume that this coefficient is uh, positive because if it's negative, then we can multiply the whole equation by negative one and switch this coefficient to be positive. Now, let us study each of these three cases in detail. Let us look at case one. To simplify notations, I will no longer write tildes on a, b, and d, and so on. So we'll write the equation as ax tilde squared plus b y tilde squared plus d x tilde plus e y tilde plus f is equal to zero. And we will just remember that these coefficients a, b, d, and so on are not the same as in the original equation, but are from this transformed equation. And here we assume that both a and b are strictly greater than zero. How can we simplify this equation further? The idea here is that we can complete the squares and then use this transformation to get rid of the linear part. To see how this can be done, let us just look at the terms uh, with x tilde. So we have a x tilde squared plus d x tilde. So what can we do? So first of all, we let us factor out a. So this is a times x tilde squared plus uh, d over a times x tilde. And then we complete the square. So this is a times x tilde squared plus two times d over two a x tilde plus d over two a squared and minus 
d over 2a squared. Then this becomes a times, so here we have a complete square, x tilde plus d over 2a squared and uh, minus, so the last term multiplied by a, so this is d squared over 4a. And now this expression becomes a square minus a constant. Now we take our equation and perform this trick both for x tilde and for y tilde. So then this equation will become a times x tilde plus d over 2a squared plus b times y tilde plus e over 2b squared plus f minus d squared over 4a and uh, minus e squared over 4b. And this whole thing is equal to zero. Now we make uh, the shift change of variables, or geometrically this will be a translation. So we introduce variables x bar, which is x tilde plus d over 2a, and the uh, y bar is y tilde plus e over 2b. Now the equation will become a x bar squared plus b y bar squared is equal to g, where g is the constant that we move to the right hand side. And here we recall that a and b here are positive. Now we have to consider subcases. So if we go to case 1a is uh, when g is greater than 0. Let us divide both sides by g and then we get a over g x bar squared plus b over g y bar squared is equal to 1. And we see that this is an equation of an ellipse. If we draw this curve in the coordinate system of x bar and y bar, then uh, we can easily see that x intercepts are square root of g over a and minus square root of g over a. So we get this by setting y bar to be equal to zero and the y bar intercepts are square root of uh, g over b and minus square root of g over b. So if both coefficients are equal to one, then we will get equation x squared plus y squared is equal to one, which is a circle. But if we insert these coefficients, then the circle will be stretched and uh, we are getting an ellipse. In case 1b, we consider g to be equal to zero. So then the equation will become a x bar squared plus b y bar squared is equal to zero. And uh, we see that the solution set is a point which is uh, the origin. So x bar y bar is equal to zero zero. So this is the only solution in this case. And finally, so if we have the g coefficient is negative, then we get a x bar squared plus b y bar squared is equal to g, right? So this is negative, but a and b are positive. And in this case, the left hand side is uh, non-negative and the right hand side is negative. And uh, in this case, we have the empty set as the solution. So when these coefficients a and b are positive, then the main case is the case when g is positive and then we get an ellipse. Let us consider case two now. In case two, the equation is a x tilde squared 
minus b y tilde squared plus d x tilde plus e y tilde plus f is equal to zero. And again, we can complete the squares. And uh, completing the squares, we will get here a times x tilde plus d over 2a all squared minus b times y tilde minus e over 2b all squared then minus d squared over 4a plus e squared over 4b plus f is equal to zero. And then we use uh, these shifts to introduce new variables. So x bar is x tilde plus d over 2a and y bar is y tilde minus e over 2b. And uh, then the equation will be a x bar squared minus b y bar squared is equal to g, where g is the constant that we collect on the right hand side. And again, we will consider subcases where 2a is the case when g is greater than zero, and the case 2b is when g is equal to zero. And the case when g is less than zero, so it reduces to the case 2a by multiplying the whole equation by negative one and then switching x bar and y bar. Let us look at the case 2a. So let us divide both sides by g. So we'll get a over g x bar squared minus b over g y bar squared is equal to one. What kind of curve is that? The trick here is that the left hand side may be factored as a difference of squares. And then we obtain the following factorization. Square root of a over g x bar plus square root of b over g y bar times square root of a over g x bar minus square root of b over g y bar is equal to 1. Now if we call the first factor as x prime and the second factor as y prime, then this equation becomes x prime y prime is equal to 1 or, so this means that y prime is 1 over x prime. This tells us that this curve is a hyperbola. Here is a graph of this hyperbola in the coordinate system x bar, y bar. And we point out that if we set each of these factors to zero, then uh, this will give us the asymptotes of uh, this hyperbola. If we consider the case 2b and set g is equal to zero, then this equation may be factored as uh, square root of a x bar plus square root of b y bar times square root of a x bar minus square root of b y bar is equal to zero. And then a product is zero whenever one of the factors is equal to zero. So we get square root of a x bar plus square root of b y bar is equal to zero or square root of a x bar minus square root of b y bar is equal to zero. And then we see that the solution set is a union of uh, two lines. Next, let us consider case three. In case three, our equation is a x tilde squared plus d x tilde plus e y tilde plus f is equal to zero. Here we can complete the square for x terms. So then we'll get a times x tilde 
plus d over 2a all squared plus e y tilde minus d squared over 4a plus f is equal to 0. And we consider two subcases. So case 3a, when e is not equal to 0. And case 3b, when e is equal to 0. In case 3a, we make the following change of variables. So we set x bar to be x tilde plus d over 2a and y bar to be y tilde minus d squared over 4ae plus f over e. In this case, our equation will become a x bar squared plus e y bar is equal to zero. And now if we set h to be minus a over e, then uh, this equation will become y bar is equal to h x bar squared. And we see that the curve is, uh, in this case, is a parabola. Finally, if we consider the case when e is equal to zero, then uh, the equation will become a x bar squared. And uh, the term with y will not be there because e is zero. And then we can move to the right hand side, whatever the, there is a constant there. So we'll get is equal to g. So here we assume that a is greater than zero. And then we get further subcases. So if g is positive, then this equation will be solved as x bar is equal to plus minus square root of g over a. Geometrically, this is a set of two parallel lines. Then we have the case when g is equal to zero. So then this equation will reduce to x bar is equal to zero. So this is a single line. And the last case is when g is negative and a is positive. So here we will get empty set. Summarizing, we get the following classification of quadrics in R2. We have the following types. We have an ellipse, we have a hyperbola, we have a parabola, we have uh, two intersecting lines, We have two parallel lines. We could have a, a single line. A point. Or an empty set. These are possible solution sets for a quadratic equation in two variables. The first three cases are the most interesting and they are also known as conic sections. If we take a cone and cut it with a plane, then we can get ellipse, hyperbola, or a parabola as the intersection. These are also trajectories of bodies moving in the central gravity field. For example, if we have a spacecraft that moves in the gravity field of a star, then the shape of its trajectory will be either an ellipse or a hyperbola or a parabola. So if the spacecraft is captured by the gravity field, then the orbit will be periodic and it will be an ellipse. If a kinetic energy of a spacecraft is high enough so that it can escape the gravity field of the star, then the trajectory will be hyperbolic. 
the intermediate case is when the spacecraft has just enough energy to go to infinity, but it will have zero velocity at infinity. In that case, the trajectory of the spacecraft will be parabolic. Let us now analyze quadrics in R3. The general equation will be some quadratic form in variables x, y, z plus linear terms dx plus ey plus fz plus g is equal to zero. We know that we can diagonalize the quadratic form using an orthogonal transformation. In new coordinate, the quadratic form will become lambda 1 x tilde squared plus lambda 2 y tilde squared plus lambda 3 z tilde squared. We are going to consider several cases corresponding to various signatures of this quadratic form. Case 1. So all eigenvalues are positive. Denoting these eigenvalues by a, b, and c, we can write the quadratic form as a times x tilde squared plus b y tilde squared plus c z tilde squared. Now, just as we did in a two-dimensional case, we can absorb the linear terms using the completion of squares. So after an appropriate shift, the equation of the quadric will become a x bar squared plus b y bar squared plus c z bar squared and then whatever constant we get, we move it to the right-hand side and call it h. Here, a, b, and c are all positive. Now let us consider subcases depending on the sign of h. So case 1a is when h is positive. In this case, we can divide by h and we get the equation a over h x bar squared plus b over h y bar squared plus c over h z bar squared is equal to 1. Now, if all of these coefficients are equal to 1, then this becomes a, an equation of a unit sphere. With the positive coefficients present, this becomes an ellipsoid. We take a sphere and stretch it in three dimensions with different factors. And uh, so here we see that uh, x intercepts are going to be plus minus square root of h over a. So y intercepts so this will be the intersection of the ellipsoid with the y-axis. So this will be plus minus square root of h over b and uh, z intercepts will be a plus minus square root of h over c. Here is a plot of an ellipsoid. In case 1b, we have h is equal to 0 and uh, then the equation ax bar squared plus b y bar squared plus c z bar squared is equal to zero with a, b, and c being strictly positive. So this has a single solution. So this becomes a point x, y, z is equal to zero, zero, zero. And finally, in case 1c, 
when h is negative, then we get the empty set. Because the left hand side is greater or equal to zero and the right hand side is negative. In case two, we will have uh, two eigenvalues positive and the third eigenvalue negative. Then after diagonalization, the quadratic form becomes a x tilde squared plus b y tilde squared minus c z tilde squared. And again, a, b, and c are positive. Again, linear terms can be absorbed into quadratic terms using completion of square. And after a shift, the equation of our quadric will become a x bar squared plus b y bar squared minus c z bar squared is equal to h. And again, we will do subcases depending on the sign of h. So case 2a. So let's consider h to be positive. In this case, the equation can be written as a over h x bar squared plus b over h y bar squared minus c over h z bar squared is equal to 1. To understand the geometry of this surface, let us look at a special case. When a is equal to b. In this case, the equation will be a over h x squared plus y squared minus c over h z squared is equal to 1. Now, the expression x squared plus y squared indicates a rotational symmetry. This means that the surface has a rotational symmetry in xy plane or around z axis. Let us construct this surface as a surface of a revolution. For this, we will take its xz cross section. So let us count this uh, surface with xz plane or we set y bar to be zero. If we intersect this surface with xz plane or rather x bar z bar plane, then the equation will be a over h x bar squared minus c over h z bar squared is equal to 1. We know that this curve is a hyperbola. We see that this curve has uh, x intercepts at plus minus square root of h over a, but it has no z intercepts. So if we set x bar to be zero, then there is no solution for z. This means that this hyperbola will cross the x bar axis, but will not cross z bar axis. And thus, this hyperbola will look like this. This hyperbola is the intersection of our surface of revolution with xz plane. And now to reconstruct the whole surface, we are going to take this uh, curve and rotate it around z axis. And then we'll get the surface of rotation, which uh, will look like this. This surface is called a hyperboloid. of uh, one sheet. If we return to the general case when a is not equal to b, then we need to take this rotationally symmetric hyperboloid and then stretch it in x and y directions. Here is a better plot of uh, one sheet hyperboloid. In case 2b, we take h to be 0. And then the equation will be ax bar squared plus b y bar squared minus cz bar squared is equal to 0. 
Again, to analyze this, let us look at the special case. When a is equal to b. In this case, the equation can be written as a x squared plus y squared minus c z bar squared is equal to zero. And again, we see that this is a surface of revolution around z-axis. Let us take its xz cross-section, where we set y to be zero. So then the equation will be a x squared minus c z bar squared is equal to zero. And this factors as square root of a x bar plus square root of c z bar times square root of a x bar minus square root of c z bar is equal to zero. In this case, the solution set in x z plane will be a pair of intersecting lines. And uh, when we start revolving this around z axis, then what we get is a cone. So when a is equal to b, we get a cone. And uh, so here we can visualize uh, that how we can shrink this uh, hyperboloid into a cone. And in general case, when a is not equal to b, we need to take this cone and stretch it in x and y directions. And uh, the result is something that is called an elliptic cone. So we're going to break the rotational symmetry. Here is a plot of an elliptic cone. And we consider the case 2c when h is negative. So in this case, the equation will be written as a x bar squared plus b y bar squared minus c z bar squared is equal to negative g, where g is the absolute value of h and is positive. Then dividing by g, we get a over g x bar squared plus b over g y bar squared minus c over g z bar squared is equal to minus one. And again, let us consider a special case when a is equal to b. And in this case, we get uh, the surface of revolution. And uh, if we take x, z cross-section, then the equation will be a over g x bar squared minus c over g z bar squared is equal to minus one. And again, it's a hyperbola. Let us plot this hyperbola. So we point out that this hyperbola has no x-intercepts, but will have z-intercepts. So it will intersect the z-axis. And thus, this hyperbola will look like this. And to obtain the surface of revolution, so we are going to rotate this hyperbola around z-axis. The name of this surface is a hyperboloid of uh, two sheets because the surface has uh, two components. In the general case, when a and b are not equal, we'll have to take the surface of revolution and stretch it in x and y directions with different factors. And uh, here is a better plot of a two-sheet hyperboloid. If we consider the case when all three eigenvalues are negative, then multiplying the whole equation by a negative sign, we will reduce it to the case when all three eigenvalues are positive. And likewise, 
if one eigenvalue is positive and two are negative, then multiplying by the negative sign will reduce it to the case two. Now this completes the classification for the case when all three eigenvalues are non-zero. Next, let us go to rank two case. So when we have two non-zero eigenvalues and one eigenvalue is zero, we consider case three. So here lambda one is positive, lambda two is positive, and lambda three is equal to zero. In this case, we can write our equation as a x tilde squared plus b y tilde squared plus dx tilde plus e y tilde plus f z tilde plus g is equal to zero. Using completion of squares, we can eliminate linear terms in x and y by absorbing them into quadratic terms. However, we cannot do this for the linear term with z. And now we will consider subcases depending whether f is zero or not. Let us look at case 3a, where f is not equal to zero. So in this case, we use the shift and we have our usual formulas for x bar and y bar. So x bar is going to be x tilde plus d over 2a, y bar is y tilde plus e over 2b, and for z we will use the shift so that we can absorb the constant into z tilde. So here we will have uh, z tilde plus g over f. Now the equation will become a x bar squared plus b y bar squared plus f z bar is equal to zero. And again, so to understand this surface, let us look at a special case when a is equal to b. In this case, we get a surface of revolution. It will have a rotational symmetry around z-axis. And if, again, as before, we consider xz cross-section, then here the equation will be a x bar squared plus f z bar is equal to zero. And uh, in xz plane, this is uh, an equation of uh, a parabola. Now, if we take this parabola and rotate it around z axis, then what we get, so we'll get a surface which is called a paraboloid. And for a general case, so we take this rotationally symmetric paraboloid and then stretch it in x and y directions with different factors. And th then this surface will be called elliptic paraboloid. And here is a plot of a paraboloid. The next case, 3b, is uh, when f is uh, equal to zero in this equation. In this case, we can absorb linear terms in x and y inside the quadratic terms, and uh, the equation will become, after a shift, a x bar squared plus b y bar squared. Well, f is equal to zero, and then we collect all constants on the right-hand side. So this is equal to h. And here, a and b are positive. Now we have to go through subcases depending on the sign of h. So we have case 3b1. So if h is greater than zero. If we look at this equation in xy plane, then we see that this is an equation of an ellipse. However, we are viewing this equation as an equation in three variables. 
even though z is not explicitly present in this equation. Since this equation does not depend on z, so this means that we can change z coordinates of points arbitrarily. So we can take points in x, y plane that form this ellipse and then move up and down from these points in the direction of the z axis. And the surface that we get in this way is called an elliptic cylinder. In particular, if a and b are equal and h is positive, then this becomes uh, the usual cylinder with the rotational symmetry around z axis. Here is a plot of an elliptic cylinder. In case 3b2, we take h to be 0. And uh, then this becomes ax bar squared plus by bar squared is equal to 0. In xy plane, so this will be a point. And since this equation does not depend on z, so we can take this point and move it up and down in the direction of z. So what we see that in the three-dimensional space, this becomes uh, an equation of a line. And the last case, 3b3, when h is negative, here we will get that the left-hand side is greater or equal to zero, and the right-hand side is negative. So the solution set is empty. We come to the case four, where lambda one is positive, lambda two is negative, and lambda three is zero. The equation in this case may be written as a x tilde squared minus b y tilde squared plus d x tilde plus e y tilde plus f z tilde plus g is equal to zero. Let us look at case 4a when f is not equal to zero. In this case, we apply the shift. So we say that x bar is equal to x tilde plus d over 2a, y bar is y tilde minus e over 2b, and we are going to absorb the constant term inside z tilde. So we'll say that z bar is equal to z tilde plus g over f. In this case, the equation will become a x bar squared minus b y bar squared plus f z bar is equal to zero. And then rearranging and dividing by f, we get that z bar is equal to minus a over f x bar squared plus b over f y bar squared. Here f is non-zero and let's uh, assume that f is positive. The case when f is negative will be the same. Now if we start at the origin and move in x direction, then we see that z is going to decrease. But if we start at the origin and move in y direction, then z is going to be increasing. So in xz cross-section, we will have a parabola with branches down. And in zy cross-section, we will have a parabola with branches up. This surface is called a saddle surface. And uh, so here is a plot of a saddle surface. Our next case for b is when f is uh, equal to zero in this equation. And then after completing the squares in x and y, we get the equation a x bar squared minus b y bar squared is equal to h. So here the z term is not present because f is equal to zero and we collect all constants on the right hand side.
Now we have to go through subcases. So we have case 4 b1. So let's assume that h is not equal to 0. Now if we look at this equation in xy plane, then we see that we get a hyperbola in xy plane. Since this equation does not depend on z, it becomes a translation invariant in z direction. And uh, what we get here is uh, we get a surface which is called a hyperbolic cylinder. And uh, here is a better plot of a hyperbolic cylinder. In case 4 b2, we take h equals 0. And uh, then the equation becomes ax bar squared minus by bar squared is equal to 0. This factors as uh, square root of ax bar plus square root of by bar times square root of ax bar minus square root of b y bar is equal to zero. So in x y plane this will become a pair of intersecting lines and then if we apply to this translation invariance in z direction so we get uh, a pair of intersecting planes. The case when two eigenvalues are negative and the third eigenvalue is zero reduces to case three by multiplying the whole equation with negative one. Finally, let us consider the case when the quadratic form has rank one. Here we consider that lambda one is positive and lambda two and lambda three are zero. And the case when lambda one is negative can be reduced to this case by switching the sign of the whole equation. In this case, the equation of the quadric will look like this. So we'll have ax tilde squared plus dx tilde plus ey tilde plus fz tilde plus g is equal to zero. As before, we can eliminate the linear term in x using completion of a square. We will split case 5 into subcases depending on whether the coefficients e and f are 0 or not. We have case 5a. So here ef is not a zero pair. In this case we will set h to be the square root of e squared plus f squared. Then we perform the following change of variables x bar is x tilde plus d over 2e, y bar. So here we want to combine these two together. So this will be 1 over h e y tilde plus f z tilde plus g over h. And we choose z bar so that this becomes an orthogonal change of variables. So z bar will be 1 over h f y tilde minus e z tilde. Then our equation will become a x bar squared plus h y bar is equal to zero. And here a and h are positive. This equation does not depend on z. And if we plot this uh, in x y plane, then as a curve this becomes a parabola. Since this equation does not depend on z, we should allow translations in z directions. And then this parabola will become a parabolic cylinder. Here is another plot of a parabolic cylinder. In case 5b, we consider that e and f are both zero. 
So there are no linear terms in y and z, and the linear term with x can be absorbed in the quadratic term using completion of the square. In this case, the equation will become a x bar squared is equal to k, where we move all constant terms to the right hand side. And uh, here a is positive, and uh, we will have to consider subcases depending on the sign of uh, the constant k. So we have case 5b1. So if k is positive, then this equation can be solved as x bar is equal to square root of k over e, or x bar is equal to minus square root of k over e. Geometrically, this becomes a pair of uh, parallel planes. In case 5b2, we consider k to be 0. And uh, then this equation will simplify x bar is equal to 0, then this is a single plane. And the last subcase, 5b3, so when k is uh, negative, then our equation ax bar squared is equal to k with negative right hand side. This uh, has no solutions, so here we get the empty set. This completes the classification of quadrics in a three-dimensional space. Let us now consider a couple of concrete examples. Consider the following example. Bring equation 6x squared minus 4xy plus 9y squared plus 8x minus 3 over 25 equals 0 to a standard form using orthogonal transformations. and translations. Determine the type of this curve. We start by looking at the quadratic form Q of V, which is uh, 6x squared minus 4xy plus 9y squared. Here we take a vector v with components xy, and uh, these are the standard com coordinates of a vector. The matrix of a bilinear form that is associated with this quadratic form is, so the diagonal entry are, are 6 and 9, and off-diagonal entries are half of this coefficient, so minus 2, minus 2. This matrix will produce this quadratic form using the formula that uh, Q of V is uh, VE transpose times A times VE. Let us find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of this matrix. So if we write down the characteristic equation lambda squared minus trace of A times lambda plus determinant of A then uh, this becomes lambda squared minus 15 lambda, and the determinant is 54 minus 4. So that's minus 50, and we set this to 0. This may be factored as lambda minus 5 times lambda minus 10. Thus, we get two eigenvalues. Lambda 1 is equal to 10, and lambda 2 is equal to 5. So we see that this form is positive definite. To find the eigenvalues, we take a minus 10 times identity. So this will give us the matrix minus 4 
minus 2, minus 2, minus 1. Here the rows are proportional and we can easily see a vector which is in the kernel of this matrix. We can take a vector 1, minus 2. And for the second eigenvector we take a minus 5 times i. So that will be the matrix 1, minus 2, minus 2, 4. And again we have proportional rows and the second eigenvector is the vector 2, 1. And here in agreement with the general theory we know that for symmetric matrices eigenvectors corresponding to distinct eigenvalues must be perpendicular to each other and so here indeed the dot product is equal to zero. Now we can write down an orthonormal basis. So for this we need to normalize these vectors. So we'll have to take 1 over square root of 5 times uh, 1 minus 2. We'll call this vector u1 and uh, the second normalized eigenvector is 1 over square root of 5 times uh, 2, 1. So let's call this vector u2. Placing these vectors as columns we get the change of basis matrix C or C B to E. So this will be, we can factor out 1 over square root of 5 times the matrix 1 minus 2, 2, 1. Now we can write down the change of basis formula. So the diagonal matrix with eigenvalues on the diagonal 10, 5 is equal to C transpose times A times C. And uh, since matrix C is uh, an orthogonal matrix, so C transpose is the same as C inverse. So this will be the change of basis matrix from E to B. And this is just the transpose of the first matrix. 1 over square root of 5 times 1, negative 2, 2, 1. If we denote the B coordinates of a vector by x tilde, y tilde, then uh, the relationship between standard coordinates of a vector and B coordinates of a vector are that uh, VE is uh, the change of basis matrix from B to E times VB. And the opposite relationship is that VB is the change of basis matrix from E to B times VE. Now if we write down this equality in more explicit form then we will get that XY which is the standard coordinates of a vector V is equal to the change of basis matrix which is uh, 1 over square root of 5 times uh, 1, 2, minus 2, 1 times uh, the vector of B coordinates of uh, vector V which is uh, x tilde, y tilde. And uh, this will tell us how to express x and y in terms of x tilde and y tilde. This gives us the following change of coordinates. So for the first component here we get x is 1 over square root of 5. And here we multiply the first row by this column. So x tilde plus 2y tilde. And y is 1 over square root of 5. And now we multiply the second row by this column. Minus 2x tilde plus y tilde. If we write down the same quadratic form q of v in b coordinates, so then the formula will be vb transpose times the matrix of the quadratic form in the new coordinate system, which is diagonal, times vb. And explicitly this becomes 10x tilde squared plus 5y tilde squared. So if we make this substitution in this quadratic form, then we can verify that uh, this will convert into this diagonalized expression. Geometrically, we have created a new coordinate system on a plane with basis vectors u1 and u2. And this basis 
is orthonormal. So this means that vectors u1 and u2 have length 1 and they are perpendicular to each other. And then x tilde measures the coordinate along the axis spanned by u1 and y tilde measures the coordinate along the axis spanned by u2. Now let us see what will happen to our equation if we perform this change of variables. We know that the quadratic form will become 10 x tilde squared plus 5 y tilde squared plus so 8 x. So here is an expression for x. So we get 8 over square root of 5 x tilde plus 16 over square root of 5 y tilde and minus 3 over 25 is equal to 0. Now let us complete the squares. So if we take the terms with x, so we factor out 10 and we get 10 times x tilde squared plus, so here we factor 2 and 5. So we get 4 over 5 square root of 5 x tilde. Then completing the square, so this becomes 10 times x tilde plus 2 over 5 square root of 5 all squared. And uh, then to compensate we subtract the constant term, so minus 10 times 4 over the square of this denominator, so this is 125. And we do the same for the terms with y. So we factor out 5 and we have y tilde squared plus 16 over 5 square root of 5 y tilde. So this is 5 times the square y tilde plus 8 over 5 square root of 5 all squared. And uh, minus the constant term which is 5 times 64 over 125. Now we use these expressions to shift x tilde and y tilde. So we introduce x bar is x tilde plus 2 over 5 square root of 5 and y bar is y tilde plus 8 over 5 square root of 5. Then our equation will become 10 x bar squared plus 5 y bar squared. And then we have constant terms. So here we can cancel 5. So we get minus 8 over 25. Here we can cancel 5 again, minus 64 over 25. And uh, there we have minus 3 over 25. That is equal to 0. 64 plus 8, that's 72, plus 3, that's 75. So 75 over 25, that's 3. So the equation becomes 10 x bar squared plus 5 y bar squared is equal to 3. If we divide everything by 3, we get the equation 10 over 3 x bar squared plus 5 thirds y bar squared is equal to 1. So this is the canonical form of this equation and we see that this is an ellipse. For this ellipse, we can say that x bar intercepts r plus minus square root of 3 over 10 and y bar intercepts r plus minus square root of 3 over 5. Let us understand better the geometry of this coordinate change. So the origin of uh, the new coordinate system is where x bar is equal to 0 and y bar is equal to 0. So this means that x tilde is equal to minus 2 over 5 root of 5 and y tilde is minus 8 over 5 root of 5.
to get a description of uh, this origin of the new coordinate system in terms of x and y, we just make a substitution in these formulas. And then we get x is, so if we compute this, so we'll get minus 18 over 25 and the value of y is minus 4 over 25. So these are the standard coordinates of the origin of the new coordinate system. To construct this new coordinate system, we take the rotated coordinate system and then shift it to the new origin, which we calculated is the point with coordinates minus 18 over 25 and minus 4 over 25. Now to construct this ellipse, we we'll look at x bar intercepts and y bar intercepts. So here we will have that x bar intercepts. So this distance here is uh, square root of 3 over 10. And for y intercepts, the distance is uh, plus minus square root of 3 over 5. And the ellipse will look uh, something like this. So here we see that we have a major semi-axis of this ellipse and the minor semi-axis. So the major semi-axis has uh, size square root of uh, 3 over 5 and uh, the minor semi-axis as size square root of 3 over 10. For our second example, we'll take a quadric surface in R3. Determine the type of uh, the surface given by the following equation. 4x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus 2xy plus 2xz plus 8yz is equal to 3. We begin by writing down the matrix of the quadratic form. So here the diagonal entries in this matrix are going to be 4, 1, 1. And for off-diagonal entries, we need to divide each of these coefficients by 2. So we'll get 1, 1, then uh, 1, 1 here, and 4, and 4 here. Next, we need to determine eigenvalues and uh, eigenvectors of uh, this matrix A. And here I'm going to skip the calculations and uh, the eigenvectors are 1, 1, 1 with eigenvalue 6. The second eigenvector is uh, 2, minus 1, minus 1 with uh, eigenvalue 2 and the third eigenvector b3 is uh, 0, 1, negative 1 with eigenvalue lambda 3 which is negative 3. To construct the change of basis matrix we need to normalize uh, these vectors. So the first vector has uh, length square root of 3 so the first column is going to be 1 over square root of 3 1 over square root of 3 and 1 over square root of 3. Then uh, the second vector has uh, length square root of 6. So here the second column is 2 over square root of 6 minus 1 over square root of 6 and minus 1 over square root of 6. And uh, the last vector has length which is square root of 2. So the last column is 0, 1 over square root of 2 and minus 1 over square root of 2. And we can see that this matrix is orthogonal. If we denote the coordinates 
of a vector with respect to this uh, new basis B as uh, x tilde, y tilde, and z tilde, then uh, the quadratic form will be diagonalized. And uh, we are going to get 6x tilde squared plus 2y tilde squared minus 3z tilde squared. And uh, this is uh, still equal to 3. Now, from our classification, we see that this is a hyperboloid of uh, one sheet. And uh, there is a sketch of that hyperboloid. The principal axes of this hyperboloid are given by the unit vectors corresponding to v1, v2, and v3.